Hi guys! Today's video is going to be a tutorial and it's going to be about this necklace that I am wearing right now. I'm going to show you how I create it, how I connect all the tiny pieces, etc. And if you like this necklace, if you would like to have it, keep on watching because at the end of this video I will be giving it away to one of you guys. So first things first, if you want to create a jewelry piece, you need all these findings that I will show you later on, but you also need inspiration. So if you do not know what you want to make, I suggest going to websites such as Pinterest, making a board with all sorts of jewelry things. I'm going to include a board in the description below to one of my Pinterest boards that I have all the things with beads on. So if I'm working on a necklace and I suddenly do not have inspiration anymore, that is where I will go and look for it. Um, so yeah, I created this necklace today during the tutorial. I hope you like it and I will see you at the end of the video. So first things first, the materials you will be needing are pliers. So these are round nose pliers and you can do about anything with rings with it. You can force them open. The second type of pliers are these ones and they are flat but they have grip on the inside. Um, so you have to be careful that you do not harm any of your metal things with these. And then the third tool are wire cutters. For the necklace that we will be making today, I will be using a cabochon setting. So this is a 30 by 40 millimeter cabochon setting. So the inner circle is 30 by 40 millimeters. And you get several different things that you can put inside it. So for example, this, this is a skull. This is a bat skull replica made out of resin. You can buy these on Etsy. You could also use um, your own image um, behind one of these glass domes. So you basically put the image behind the dome and then you glue them together into the cabochon setting. And then the third one is actually the one that we're going to be using today. And this is a Skull Lady cabochon setting. And um, these also come from Etsy. So as you can see, you can just pop in the setting to see how it looks and to glue this to the setting you will be needing some glue and I'm using E6000 and you can get these into tiny tubes like this one or you can get bigger tubes um, and I use this basically for all my craft projects. Since we're going to be making a necklace we also need a clasp to close it, a lot of rings so I have this bag of various sizes rings so I think they go from three, four, five, six, seven, and eight millimeters. And the ones I use most are the five millimeter ones, but I do not have a lot of them left. So I will be using the other sizes to compensate for the fact that I am waiting for my order of these ones. And this is a package that I got off of eBay, I believe. So I find some things on eBay, but most of it I buy on Etsy. Since we're making a necklace, you're gonna need chains. So these are all my color chains, so black and gray and stuff. And these are my silver ones, so here are the long ones. And these are all bits that I have left from other projects. What you'll also need is pins, so you have flat head pins and you have eye pins, I believe these are called. So you have a loop on one side. So I have one size of the flat head pins and two sizes of the eye pins. Um, and this is the smallest size and this is just perfect to put one bead on and then close it again so these are really tiny and then of course you will need beads and these are all different beads so since um, my cabochon is black with red i am using black beads so i have all different sizes these go from a four six eight and um 10 millimeters then i also have drop beads different types of drop beads um, then I also have some red beads because I would love to incorporate some red beads into the design and these are um, bicone beads. So these two packages are mostly bicone beads and these are all just smooth beads. And then the last little jar that I'm showing you and this is optional, these are all findings. So these are filigrees, um, pentacles, keys and other tiny supplies, um, spiders other filigree pieces, connectors, etc. So these are all tiny pieces that I can incorporate into the jewelry if I want to, but if I don't want to, that's no problem. To start off this project, we're gonna glue the cabochon into the setting. And basically what you do, is you take your glue, you open it, and what I like to do is I put a dot in the middle, and then a tiny bit on each side. So that I have a tiny bit of glue about everywhere 
and when I press the cabochon into the glue it kind of just spreads and you can feel that you can still move it around so you should place it the way you want it exactly right now and then we're gonna just put this aside and let it dry so for this project I want to use a majority of black beads and I'm gonna put the beads all on the table so that I know what I'm working with and I'm kind of putting them in rows already so that I know for example if I want to use two black ones, one red one, again two black ones. So I'm kind of mapping out what I want to make and just putting them in the order that I want. So once I'm done putting these all on pins, it's really easy to just connect them all and see what it's gonna look like. So what I want to do for today's project is take the red beads and put tiny bead caps on them so that they're more elegant and more presentable. So what you will do is you take the eye pin and you kind of pinch the eye pin with your pliers. Then you put on the bead cap, the bead, and then the other side of the bead cap so that it looks just the way you want it and then you're gonna take your pliers gonna gently bend it to one side and then with the head twist it to the other side and this is gonna create the eye like this so that you have a loop so that afterwards you can connect multiple pieces to one and I'm just gonna do two of these gonna take another one so it's bead cap bead the other side bead cap and you apply them towards you and then you twist it away from you and you close it and there we go and I always like to make sure that both sides are closed and that they are straight so sometimes it's necessary to kind of pinch them afterwards and just make sure that everything is okay so these are two beads already done and if like me you want the end beads to just have uh, to just be the end. You're gonna take a head pin, put the bead on the head pin, and you will see that you have a lot of excess. And how I determine how much I need to cut off is basically I put my finger on it, and the thickness of my finger is what I need to, to keep. So I cut off the excess, and then I hold on to the bottom really well and push it up, and then I twist. So then you twist it inside and then you apply it to the other side so that you again create a loop. When you start off making jewelry it can be really frustrating creating these loops um, but once you do it more and more often you will get used to it and you will get a hang of it, I promise. It's just hard at the beginning. You can obviously put one bead on one um, head pin or eye pin uh, but I'm gonna show you as well how I put multiple beads on one. So you take a larger pin and you put one small bead, a larger bead for example, and then a small bead again so that you kind of create a effect that is really nice on a necklace you cut off some of the excess because it is way too much and you take your pliers again so you put it towards you and then you bend away and then I also like to squeeze it a tiny bit to make sure so this is how you make um, kind of prettier details to some necklaces so you basically can connect this also to this one maybe I'll just use it here So now that I have kind of mapped out the way that I want my necklace to be, I'm gonna connect all the different parts that I just created. And this is actually really simple. You take one of the eye pins, you bend it open with your pliers so that you have kind of a tiny gap, and you just put the other one over it, and then you apply it back closed so that you connect the two. And then you will just kind of do the same process over and over to connect the other.
And then it is time to connect those pieces to the actual cabochon that we were working on. And you have to decide if you want to immediately attach the beads to the cabochon or if you want um, a piece of thread first and then the, the beads and then another piece of thread. Um, so I'm gonna quickly connect the bottom. What you'll need is a ring. And I think I'm gonna need a six millimeter ring. And I have some that are already pried open, but it's really easy. You just take your two pairs of pliers and you gently twist it. So you gently do this. So you open it and if you close it, you do the exact same, but in the other direction. And this is what causes less damage on the actual connector. So I'm treading this through. I'm taking the bottom up like this and then I'm closing it. And this will make sure that you have the exact same closure here. So if you bend it or if you ply it open this way, so if you pull it open, it's really hard to get it round again. And then this just dangles from the cabochon right now. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the other side. So I'm gonna open the ring, put my piece onto it, go to the cabochon and thread it through the cabochon. And then close it again and make sure that they align perfectly so that there's no gaps that nothing can escape. And then for the middle part I was thinking of using some black jewelry over here. So this one. At first to kind of connect two pieces to the base of the necklace and then to use it as well for the end. And I almost always have some spare pieces so I'm gonna just use this one. And an easy way to make sure that you have the middle is to just pin it onto an eye pin or a hat pin and then just follow it and then you will see that most of the time you'll have one piece or in this case two that you will have to cut to have two pieces that are the exact same length. So you just take your cutters and you just cut up the two pieces. You're gonna take your ring, you're gonna loop it through. You're going to the necklace and hold it really well, so like this. And then you're gonna apply them together. So right now we have two pieces of black chain connected already. And then I'm gonna put these beads onto the black pieces of chain. Also with a tiny a little ring. Now that those are connected, it looks like this. And this is more or less the moment where you decide how long you want your necklace to be. Um, I'm gonna put another black piece of wire here and then I'm gonna finish it with um, the clasp on one side and then um, some holes on the other one so that you can close it. I take five of them, so I open one, I put two rings in them, like so, then I close it, like that. Then I take another one and I kind of just loop one here, another one here. So that I have a total of five bigger rings that are connected so that if you want your necklace really tight you can put it on this one, if you want it a bit looser you can put it on this one and this is what will come onto this side and I will connect it to the wire. So this is how it sits right now, so it is a bit low, but I kind of like it low, this necklace. And I'm gonna just connect these two pieces to the back as well, but then with silver wire. So this was my tutorial for this necklace. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a bit more about how I make my jewelry. I will include a link to my Etsy store if you want to buy something from me um, and to also some stores where I get my supplies so that you, if you want to create something but you don't know where to get these beads or where to get cameos, I will leave some links in the comments below. 
I'm also giving away this necklace, so if you would like to win this necklace, simply leave in the comments what you would wear this with. So this is maybe not the perfect combination for this necklace, and I would like to give one of you the chance to get one of my necklaces. So this one that I am just wearing right now for the video, and then I will also take some pictures in it. But that's it, after this I'm gonna just put it in a nice little satchel, and then in two weeks time I will select a winner, and that winner will get this exact necklace. If you want it longer, shorter, that is possible, so don't worry if you find it a bit long. I can always adjust it so that it comes maybe like this, or if you want it even longer, you can always ask me when you win it. I have only two rules for this giveaway. The first one is you have to be subscribed and the second one you have to comment. If possible that you are over the age of 18, that is great so that we have no problem with the shipping etc. If you are under 18, please ask the permission of your parents to give me your address etc. So that if you win, I can send this necklace out to you. In two weeks time, I will pick a winner, I will make an announcement video for the winner and then I will contact them as well, of course, um, so that I can send this beautiful necklace to y'all. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching guys, bye!